paint West Virginia barns. These are two barns that's really neat that I, I took a picture of them while I was in West Virginia and thought they'd make a nice painting. So we're going to get started today and let me run through the brushes that we're going to be using today. Hold them up here where you can see them. This is a fan brush and you want to be sure it's a bristle fan brush, not the synthetic. And the small background brush is a, also a bristle with a longer hair. Nice brush. We'll be using it a lot today. And a detail flat. My detail flat is about a size 8 and a flat sable. We'll be painting the buildings with that and some other detail areas. And also the liner is just my little number one liner. And uh, we'll be using it for some of the small areas and little tree branches and so forth. Now then, we'll go to our colors. I got kind of carried away with the colors this time because we've got 11 colors out here. So um, I'll start on this end. This is cad yellow medium. And then we have white. And this one is Naples yellow. And then we have cadmium orange, burnt sienna. Uh, let's see, that one is raw umber, paints gray, endothrone blue, cobalt turquoise, and then we have two greens down here. This one is viridian and this one is permanent green, um, permanent green light. Yeah. And that's your colors for today. And then besides that, you need some liquid or liquid glaze for a painting medium. I have some in a little cup here that we'll be using. And then you need your brush cleaner out. Be sure you have a good odorless brush cleaner to clean your brushes along as you go and at the end of the day. So, okay, we're going to get started. And I like to start with the sky and then we just kind of come on down through the painting. Do the backgrounds, uh, all area, areas of the background first. And I'm going to come in with this uh, flat brush, your bristle brush. What we're going to do is work out some sky areas and these don't have to be in any certain place and every, everyone's sky will look a little different and that's fine. But we're going to use white and a little touch of the cobalt turquoise and it's a very little touch because that color is very strong. And we'll use that and maybe a touch of the viridian to make a sky color. So I'm going to kind of hold this up, maybe we can see it a little bit. Pull out some white on your palette where you can mix. And then just take the corner of the brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Viridian Green, which looks kind of like a pretty blue when you get it mixed in with the white. It's a blue-green. And just a little touch of the turquoise. So you've got a real soft, pretty uh, turquoise blue color that's going to be our sky. And as you brush mix this, you may want to pick up a little medium with it. And as you remix it, as long as you go, your, as you go along through the sky, your colors will vary a little bit, and that's fine. We don't mind that at all. In fact, that's what we want. I'm going to start with a little area kind of right up here. And if, if you want to lean more to the turquoise, You'll have more of a blue if you get a little more of the viridian that's kind of a pretty, it's like a sea foam green is what I always think of. It's pretty in ocean scenes too. A little bit and then we'll come on across. And uh, you could even pick up just tiny little touches of the uh, in the throne blue in there too if you want some of that. Just keep, keep your value in when we talk about value, that's just your lights and darks. Keep your value light so that we're not going to get too heavy on the paint. Either just kind of little back and forth strokes or you can go up and down or go any, any direction that you want on this so it has enough push to the paint too that you're filling in the texture of the canvas as you go along. I'm going to come on down toward the mountain here on this side of the tree. It looks like I've got just a little touch, might even have just a tiny touch of Payne's gray in with the colors down here toward the mountain. I can see it looks a little bit grayer maybe. I'm going to 
put just a little bit of kind of thin paint inside this tree in a few places just maybe hopefully we'll be able to leave some of that showing when we paint the tree so our tree looks like you can see sky through it in places you don't have to lose the whole tree but i'm just going to put a little bit in there kind of stretch it out thin so the paint isn't going to be really heavy when you know you're going to be putting other colors on top of colors you want to keep the first coat pretty thin I'm about to probably get enough blue in the sky anyway. We're going to have these darker clouds coming in. Some of it can be on top of what we've already done, and some areas we can put it in the open places still. So that's probably enough of the blue, I think. Okay, that's once you have enough, what you feel like maybe is enough blue in here, and you can always come back and put in some more if need be. I'm going to put in the dark side of these clouds. Uh, we've got kind of a blue-gray on the dark side of the clouds, and then we'll have some lighter area on the light side, which is going to be on the right side. We've got our light coming from the, from the uh, right in this picture. so. I'm going to reach down and pick up just a little touch of paint's gray and mix it in with the white. A little bit of paint's gray. Doesn't take much. I'm just kind of mixing it in where I had the blue mixed in. I'm going to try this color. Paint's gray gives, especially in the uh, Formalba colors, which is what I'm using, it makes a nice blue gray. and I'm. I'm going to put this blue-gray, what will wind up being kind of the left side of a cloud shape. And, and as I said, everybody's going to look a little different, but just be sure you have soft edges here. And I'm leaving still yet some room for the light in the cloud. So these clouds are a little bit more detailed than some that we do. Got a few more colors in there. There's your paints gray and white, just a soft blue gray. Look, looks real pretty up there. You could add just a speck of the endothrone blue in there too if you wanted it a little bit bluer, but just the paints gray and white by itself is fine. Some of the brands of paints gray, like Grumbacher or some of the other, are a little bit grayer actually and not quite as blue as this one. I'm I like this one the best because it's bluer. Real pretty color. Use a lot of paints gray. This will come down to the mountain range, perhaps, here. Try not to lose all of the white canvas as you paint. It's, sometimes it's hard not to lose it all. But try to save some areas so we can put our light in there and put it against white and it shows up brighter. If you lay it against blue, it's hard to see it. And again, these brush strokes just kind of go different directions. Some of this cloud's going to be behind the big tree and that's okay. I don't care. Right over here. Probably not enough. I'm going to quit right there on the paint spray and white. Okay, when you have your sky done and you feel like you've got enough light blue and enough of the grays in there, clean your brush, turp it out, wipe it out good. These bristle brushes really hold the turp, they suck that turp up, so pinch your Pinch your brush with your in your towel and get it nice and dry. Be careful though when you clean clean your brushes. Sometimes I see students just really scrub, 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 and they're they're tearing their brush up when they do that because you want the brush to stay nice and flat as long as possible. So you don't want to bend those bristles back the wrong way. So be careful with them. Uh, for the light in the clouds now, we're going to pick up white. 
I've got just a little touch of cad orange and a little touch of maples yellow. And maples yellow is your darker yellow. And this is just enough of those two colors to give it a little bit of a soft kind of a glow. Like we don't want to get it too bright. Just so it'll barely show up as a color. And that looks pretty good. And you'll need quite a bit of this in your brush. So it's, it's a little more orange probably in there than the yellow. So I'm going to start kind of on the outside edge of the cloud and lay that in. Hopefully you've got some unpainted canvas to work against. If, if you don't and you think your color's picking up too much blue, you can take a corner of a paper towel and just kind of wipe an area off so you don't have quite as much paint there. And then when you come over into the gray-blue, don't just stop. Take your brush, kind of do like little X strokes to blend back into the shadowy gray that we put in. You don't want to leave it in an abrupt line, because that wouldn't look natural. So you're going to start maybe a little bit outside of the white, kind of get over into the blue or whatever is there, and then just kind of brush with little brushy strokes that go different directions. And you're creating that nice light shape. And let's see, we'll come over here. There's the tree right there. So if I don't, don't paint everything behind the tree, that's okay. But I'll come down to the mountain. Orange with just a little bit of Naples yellow. And again, if it's too, too strong, just add more white. I want it to look a sunny day with the light hitting the clouds. And over here we've got some on this cloud. And kind of little flip-flop back and forth strokes to blend it over into the shadow color. If you happen to lose too much of your shadow color, you can put it back in. With oil painting you can just keep rearranging colors till you like it. And just don't overblend to the point that everything becomes one color. That's what you have to watch out for. And on these these light values here, I did not thin the paint. I should have told you that to begin with, but I I didn't put any medium in the paint because I like for it to look, go on a little bit drier. It seems like it works better and you don't lose it against the other color. Like I said, sometimes I'll pick up, you know, just a little bit more <coughs> of the purple or paint gray mixture and put a little bit more back in here and there. So just make some nice, interesting clouds. That's all we're looking for don't all look the same. A little bit more dark in that one. And I think that's pretty good. That gives me some nice variation of color up there. And looks like a pretty sky. down now to our mountain range and we'll start with the center mountain because it's the farthest away. I've got some varying mixes of color in here. I'm going to start with white and a little bit of Payne's gray. I've got a little bit of the uh, permanent green light mixed in. That's going to give you a, kind of a gray green color that might be kind of pretty back there. I do a lot of variations of color. I'm going to start kind of right in here. Use the whole flat of the brush and little padding down strokes. These mountains are covered with trees, so we don't want to go back and forth and smooth them out too much. You kind of want to create a little bit of texture. You can even come up a little bit above the line of the mountain, so you're kind of giving it a little irregular pattern against the sky. 
sometimes I just pick up some of the permanent green light and, and white, which gives you a little bit more of a green look. And you can you could use a little touch of medium if you want to thin the paint down just a little bit, it be okay. If if it looks like your color is looking too dark, just pat a little, pick up some more white and pat it in there. If it's too green, add a little bit more paint's gray, so blew it up a little bit. But this, this is trees and, you know, stuff on the mountain, so it's going to be varied colors to some extent. And we'll come right down to the barn roof. Be careful with your barn roof that you don't lose it. Just continue using the flat of the brush. You can kind of go up and down and back and forth, but keep on the flat. tree can even be totally painted out or you can go around the truck if you want to probably lose it eventually anyway so matter keep enough blue in this mountain color to look distant uh, blue cool blues always look far away uh, you can add just little bits tiny bits of uh, even a little bit of that cobalt turquoise, just a tiny bit of it. It's bright, but it'll, it's such a pretty color. You know, I'm really a little bit more into the blues than the greens on this one, so we get this distant feel. Come down, you've got kind of a little tree roll way back there on your right side that's some of these trees will be taller than others but we can paint out the tops of them because they'll come back when we put the trees in. So, you know you, you certainly want the variations to your colors so this would not all be one color by any means. side of this mountain right here is just a little bit darker. I'm going to come back with just a touch more of the paint's gray and white in it to, to deepen the shadows on this side here. Since the light's coming from the right, the left side of the mountain would be more in shade. When you get this in, and up there on that screen, it looks darker than it really is. Adjust my colors in there. But I'm going to come back with a fan brush at the last and pick up just a little bit of Naples yellow and white, and I'm going to add a little yellow white to this side of the mountain, just a little bit of yellow white, Naples and white. Little short padding down strokes with the fan brush gives you that little texture, too, really soft texture just a little bit of sunshine on the mountain. Okay, when, you, when you've got your mountain kind of locked in for, for the distant one back in here, let's come on down to this. This mountain's a little closer to us, so it's going to be darker. Pick up just a little bit more of your um, darker values. I'm going to use some more Payne's Gray and a touch of um, the permanent green light and your paint's gray, but it's, it's just a little darker, quite a bit darker value. And I'm just going to do this with a fan brush. Okay, permanent green light, a little paint's gray, a little bit of medium. And kind of follow the angle of the mountain as you, as you work this in. You're going to come on down. 
little short padding down strokes. Don't, don't get in a hurry and make big long sweeping strokes because it looks flat that way. We want texture on the mountain. Little lights and darks. Down here toward the building there's going to be a little blue fog down there so you leave a little bit very unpainted there if you want. So again this is kind of variations of Payne's gray and permanent green light. You can have little touches of the endothrome blue in there, just little variations of, of colors. It's a blue-green. But because this is looking closer to us again, we want to work some darker colors in. And if you can work both some light and dark in here, so again, it's not all one flat color that's going to make it look more real. A little bit of medium in the brush helps helps it to move. Try to paint with about half of your fan brush. If you paint dead center, you begin to get arch shapes that don't look so good. There's going to be a little blue foggy area down there toward the bottom. We'll leave some room for that. So I like some of this to look lighter and some to look darker. So we've got that texture going on. And come down about, about into there. Good. After you've got your texture in on the mountain and, and right at the very top, but I did put just a little bit of yellow-white in here. That's a little Naples yellow and white. And just create a little bit of light along that top somewhere so it looks like the light's hitting those trees back in the distance. And then we're going to come down to the fog. And this is just white with a little touch of the cobalt turquoise. That real pretty turquoise blue. And it doesn't take much of it at all. It's, it's a very strong color. Add a little of that to your white, and then I'm just kind of patting this in right at the bottom, and you can work on top of your mountain color if you didn't leave any room there. And this is circular strokes. I'm, I'm laying it in and then just kind of going around and around and around so it gets a foggy effect. What brush are you using? Use the same brush. Just go ahead and use your... We were using the fan Flat. brush. Oh, I'm sorry. We was using the fan brush while ago. This is the, yeah, this is the background brush, small background brush. Get that little foggy motion going on. And you'll, you'll pick up some of your base coat color there that's darker, and that's, that's good. You want to do that. But this would not have a top edge or anything to it. There's no line there. Just kind of create a little misty, foggy effect. You could even put a little of that over on the other side of the uh, canvas if you want to move just a little bit over to the other side, onto the right. And put some over here. right into here. There's going to be some trees under this, but a little bit of blue. That pretty turquoise blue looks good anywhere you put it. It's just such a pretty color, especially if it's in the background. A little bit right in there. Okay. Okay, so we're, next we're going to come into these bushes, and we're going to start with a dark base coat. We've got bushes here. We've got some on the other side of the barn, too. But we'll start here. Use your small background brush still yet, and I'm, I'm going to put a dark base coat on here. Foliage, trees, bushes, all of that stuff, with oil painting, you always start with the darkest value, and then you put your light colors on top of it. So that's what we'll, we'll do. We're going to start with Payne's Gray, and probably just Payne's Gray is good enough. It's going to look very dark. Sometimes you might want to throw in just a little touch of raw umber or something else, but 
don't want it to go too brown. It, it's just a dark mix. A little touch of medium is okay in it. And be, be careful over here around the edge of the building. We don't want to lose our barn. This barn has an overhang right here. Some of these old barns in the east had this overhang kind of thing going on. If you need to get a smaller brush in these small areas, that's fine. Just take the little smaller flat in some of those little tiny areas like that particular area. And then we're just coming up, come up to your misty fog area. But all of this just is really scrubbed in real thin. You want it to look dark. You want it to look very dark. But you also want it stretched out because we've got other colors to put on top of this. So we don't want this paint to be to go on thick. This is some of that scrubby stuff that kind of ruins your brush. If you had an old scrubby brush, this would be a good place to use it. want these bushes, some of them, to be taller than others. When you're doing shrubbery, don't make them all the same height. You want some tall and some shorter. Of course, we have to fill up all of the white background. some of your fog back there, but don't lose it all. Try not to lose it all. Those little taller bushy trees right here at the edge of the canvas. Again, watch this top line and make it irregular. And down in here, this can just simply be filled in. And the best way you can do it is get, get the base coat on there as quick as you can. This is nothing more than a base coat. And then let's move to the other side over here and we'll base that one in as well. And you'll find from this line here on up, it's going to be those background trees that we're seeing. And again, they're going to start out with a dark value. When you're painting, if you're painting from a photograph or painting from life or whatever, in any area, look for the darkest value that you see in there, like we're seeing very dark behind, between the, the tree shapes and so forth. And anyway, that dark is what you put on first. If you start with a mid-tone or, or a light value, then you, you look very flat because you don't have any depth in there. We'll, we'll lose a lot of this dark, but it has to be some of it in there that we still see. That gives it shape. The dark values give anything shape. And again, we're the same same idea here as far as getting it uneven at the top. I'm going to switch real quick here to a smaller brush in these little bitty areas because I don't want to lose my barn lines. So you can go to your detail flat get right up against the building and then you'll be a little better in a better shape there not to lose your pattern lines. And again some of this is taller, some shorter. When you get that dark in there, you'll notice how it really pushes the rest of the mountains back. When you see this dark value here, everything behind it looks a lot farther away. Okay, so there's your base coat. I'm going to clean my brush, so I'm dipping it in the turf and drying it out. 
We're going to put a little bit of light foliage on these trees now, and we'll, we'll put some on now, and we can come back and put more on later once it dries a little bit or tacks up. But um, I'm using some various mixtures here. I've got some cad yellow light mixed in with the permanent green light, or grid in. You can use one or the other or both of those light greens, and then add just a little bit of yellow. Let's see what that would do. Now, when you're I'm tapping with this brush, I'm going to, I'm just going to do this. Watch me for just a second here. The light is coming from the right. So if I come in and tap lighter greens on the on a right side, and then kind of fade it out a little bit and let it fade out into the dark as it goes back here into the shadows to the left and then pick up a little bit more of the yellow greens and start another group here. See, I'm connecting these strokes. Don't jump around. Don't go dot, 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 dot. You, you, you want to dot, dot all together here so it, you're making a group of something. And you're going to pick up some of that dark underneath there, of course. But that's going to make it look, um, you know, like you're getting the little groupings of your foliage. So, anyway, I'm working with, my, with the greens uh, and a little bit of the yellow in there. That makes it really nice and light. But you can also have either one of the greens, the viridian or the permanent green light, with just a little bit of white with it and it shows up a nice light and bright green. But you want it lighter, the, the basic rule of thumb is lighter on the right side and then as it fades over onto the dark side to the left, you just don't lift up on the pressure of the brush so you don't have so much pressure coming off and your color won't be as, as bright. kind of skipping around and tapping it in. So you're creating those shapes and groupings of your foliage. Foliage is always kind of hard for people to do because they they overwork it usually and they end up losing all their dark values. People do that a lot. Again, you've got to have a lot of paint on your brush because otherwise you're going to lose it in the dark. Okay, we're going to move over here to the other side and we're taking the fan brush and give ourselves some little foliage shapes in here with our light greens. Just remember not to lose all of the dark and think in terms of groups and clusters. Always load the brush like you're pushing away from you. And then turn it so the paint is up and you can just tap in all kinds of little nice foliage leafy shapes. And that should be enough for that. Okay, let's work our grass and that's going to come down under these bushes. And let's just go down about even with the bottom of the barn for right now. We're going to use our fan brush, and this is going to be little short downward strokes. Pick up some of that light yellow green like you were just now working with to, to highlight the trees. It's your white and a little touch of yellow, a little touch of your uh, permanent green light in it. Now this time the paint can be on the bottom of the brush. So you can load it so the bottom of the brush is full of paint or flip it over so it's you're working on the bottom. And little short, short padding strokes. Starts out with a real bright yellow green back there where the light's really hitting it. And we'll just keep our strokes kind of short. And as I begin to come down here, I'm going to pick up a little bit darker value. So pick up just a little bit of your um, permanent green light, a little touch of the viridian. That's a little bright. I'm going to add just a touch of, of the endanthrone blue to my mix of greens to darken it. doesn't take much blue, but a little bit of that dark blue added to your green mixes will give you a darker value of green. So 
will come down about to there somewhere. You don't want a, a definite line between the light where it fades from light to dark. You want it to, to softly just fade in. Come right over there's a little barrel sitting there at the corner of the building. We won't lose that. There's that little section of grass can be just like that. And then let's move over to the other side. Okay, so we've got the same thing going on here. We'll just paint down to the bottom of that bar. And again, we've got that building kind of overhanging the foundation on this side. I don't see barns doing that so much around here in Missouri, but I've noticed it quite a bit in the eastern states, West Virginia and Virginia, and through there they have that kind of a look. Of the, I guess the idea is to provide a little shelter under the barn there for the livestock. I don't know what else it would be there for. And we're coming down. I'm not going to paint this dark what will be a darker area right in there beside the barn. Just keep it this little area, area that's narrow here and as it fades on down toward the bottom, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the endothrome blue along with the, the uh, viridian or the and or the other green, the permanent green light get it a little darker as it moves on down toward the edge of the canvas. In fact, it's quite a bit darker down there. I'm going to add this little bit of things right to it, too. So it's light up by the barn fading down into shadow as it kind of goes down the hill. We're going to move to this uh, section of the back barn down here. And we don't want to get this building too dark. I'm going to be using kind of mixtures of Payne's gray and raw umber and white. Um, but we're going to have uh, a streaky look. We want to wind up with a streaky look in there. And we're going to paint right, we're going to lose these lines going across. They're, they're easier to put back in than they are to try to paint each section different. It would not go together. Um, your Queen's Gray and your Raw Under, of course, are both very dark colors. And so you've got to add some white to them. And the idea, of course, is this looks like old, unpainted wood uh, building. And I, I usually hold my brush kind of sideways and go up and down like this. And we want to wind up with some different colors in here. And we'll come back and put our, our little definite board lines in there. And we're going to use a little medium. A little medium along. And uh, so you're thinning it slightly. Some of it can look a little grayer and some a little browner, which old buildings would do. So again, it's Payne's gray and white, a little bit of raw umber. That's the very dark colors we've got. And put enough white in it that it looks like old, unpainted wood. Uh, usually I start out by coming right in under the roof edge so I know exactly where the top of it is. Let's do that. And you're just coming right under that roof. Paint this gable inside first, and then just take your br your brush and do these little. And again, like I said I'm going right across these horizontal lines. We we'll get a coat on here and try to get some variation to it. Uh, if you don't get enough, we'll we'll add more variation. Kind of a, you see right there I picked up just a little touch more raw umber so it looks a little browner. Keep enough medium in it again. The medium is good when you're doing these old barn boards because it keeps it 
stretching out lighter and easier to fill in your canvas. What brush is that? I'm, I'm using the detail flat. Yeah, go to a small, you know, like a small flat bristle or sable, I mean. A sable brush. Try to keep your direction of your movement going straight up and down. Don't go cattywampus. Cattywampus is. The barn boards need to go vertical or uh, horizontal like they were nailed on. Sometimes you can use the flat of the brush and other times I use the side so you know the idea is just to get some nice little streaks in there and enough medium that your paint is moving nicely without it just being so wet it's sliding too much. But this is the shadowed side of the building so it's going to be a little bit darker. As we come over to the edge of the barn, sometimes I find when I get to the edge of a building, for contrast sake, I have to go back and work on the background a little bit to make light against dark contrast. Because when you're painting, you're, you're always going to be painting light against dark values when you switch from one object to another and they touch each other, like the barn's touching the background trees and the background all together back there. And you want to make sure, uh, basically the barn is darker than like the trees are up against it. So we may have to do a little correcting in color values as we move along, we'll see. Coming over here, but where you're going to touch this front barn, I'm going to make sure the back barn is going to be darker right here because the front barn will be a little bit lighter and that will separate them. Your values, which just means light and dark, your values are the most important thing in the painting, much more important than color because you want it to look right, if you took a picture of it in, in black and white, you would want it to look like your objects are not all running together. So you have to get your values right for that to happen. So you're always thinking in terms of light against dark as you paint. create this darker value with a little bit more of the brown and gray tones where it's going to be bumping up against that front building. You can also have a little bit of blue-white on this building, a little bit of blue and white, not, not a great deal, but a little bit of the blue looks good in there. You can even have little touches of green in the building. Since the, the landscape around it is green, a little green in the building helps tie things together. So, you know, plus it kind of gives your building a mossy look. Those old barn boards get mossy. So just occasionally you can reach down and pick up one of your greens, just some of the light green mixes that you've got going on there. And that will look good in your building. I'm trying to finish up with it looking rather streaky. 
and then I'm coming back to this area right here where my uh, trees are hitting the building and I'm taking a little bit of yellow green in my small brush and I'm going to pat a little extra on the background trees right there where they're touching the building. And this would probably be more yellow white because I want this to be a nice contrast against that wall. So I'm going to add a little more color to those bushes right there than they wound up with earlier. ahead and put uh, a little bit of the Payne's Gray Raw Umber. Uh, I'm going to paint this overhang of the roof right here on this left side of the gable. There's a little strip there that's going to be very dark. That's where the roof sticks out. So you're seeing the underneath side of the roof. Down it out there. Sometimes I make it just a little uneven, like maybe you add some shingles missing or something. And there's going to be a small dark line coming down the other side. It will be a little shadow line. While I'm up there with the dark in the brush, I'll go ahead and paint that little window up there. It's kind of a little vent window rather than having glass in it, it, it's going to have some little vent lines or bars across it. All right, we're going, we're going to move over here and do this little bit of the, the barn that you're seeing just a little bit of the wall here on either side of the forward building. And to make it look like it's more in the light, I'm laying the dark right in underneath that bottom line. And then clean the brush and I'm picking up white with just a little touch of orange. This is going to look like a real sunny little area of board, very tiny. As I lay that orangey white in, I'm kind of catching into that dark at the top. Blending it down just a little bit on e either side, and that's all there's going to be there. So you lay the a raw underline at the top there, and then you just lightly pull down with orangey white. Just a little bit orange with your white that makes it look like it's warm, like the light's hitting that wall. this little foundation that's right underneath the building and it's it's concrete it be a concrete foundation so we want it to be just a little lighter in value than what the top portion of the building is so I'm going to pick up some white and just a little touch of raw umber and a little touch of burnt sienna just to make kind of a kind of a light brownish color, a little red brown in it from the burnt sienna. And let's just fill that in. I'm just going to paint, paint out those little windows. They're easy enough to put back in. Just paint them out. So this makes kind of a brownish, pinkish looking color. I want it just a little bit darker over here toward the, toward the right. So I'll put a little bit more raw under in here. But the color can, can look kind of padded together, so it's got a little bit of a textured look to it. And as you come out toward the left end here, I'll create a little edge there. 
And if anything, maybe just a little bit more of the burnt sienna and white out here toward the end. So like I said, the colors can vary a bit. And uh, something about like that is probably good enough. And there will be a little dark line above it. We need a little definite uh, bottom to the wall above. So I'll put some burnt umber there. Then I'm just going to take the corner of my brush and a little bit of uh, burnt umber. And there's four little windows. I've kind of lost my patterns, but it's one, two, three, four, and they don't have to be perfect. It's just a suggestion of little windows and no detail to them. It's the elongated windows. While we can still lay our hand down on the front building with no paint on it, it'd be a good time to go ahead and paint, paint those little board lines in this wall back here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with just a little bit of burr umber and maybe a touch of Payne's Gray in it. It's just a dark line. And first we've got this one that I'm just going to kind of sketch in that goes across. I work on the bottom corner or bottom half of the brush, bottom side of the brush, and, and do the horizontal line. And then there's one that's going to run a little above the point of the foreground building roof. We don't want this line running right into the edge of the roof, so come above it a little bit. This goes across. And we've got a few little board lines. And again, I'm just taking the side of the brush and suggesting these little lines. You can do it with a liner, but they usually wind up looking a little too, too stiff, too much like little strings. So I like to use the side of the brush instead. And these don't have to be perfect by any means. You don't have to measure and space them out or anything. They just need to be little board lines, little crack lines. These old old buildings sat for many, many years in the cold and the heat and everything and the boards begin to pull apart from each other and sometimes they get very wide spaces in between them. And so these could be fairly wide or you could leave them fairly small. Dampen the brush with a little bit of medium when you're doing these little board lines and then pick up just, just a small amount of the dark on, on one side of the brush is all you need. And then they'll just zip right in. And some of them could have wider spaces in between or like broken boards. Depends on how much damage you want to do to your barn to make it look old, but you can add dark uh, cracks in between, some of them a little bit heavier, like boards that had chunks out of them or whatever. Or not, if you don't want to damage your barn that much, you don't have to. While we're doing the detail on it too, that little uh, vent window that's way up here in the top, um, let's go ahead with our little gray color and just put little lines across it like that just so, so that you can see there's little vents up there. I'm going to do another thing too while I'm up here with this detail. I'm going to, where I can set my hand down, there's a little lightning rod right up there on the peak of the building. And you can put that in also using your side of your brush, or you can use a liner in the end if you'd rather. I won't put one on the other side, it kind of gets lost in the trees anyway. So there's your detail on that side of the bottom.
Okay, let's move on up to the roof, and when you're ready, you've got your detail done pretty much on your barn, and so I'm going to come up here. Uh, this is a lot of burnt sienna on the barn. It's a red roof, rusty red roof. It's got a little bit of blue pulled in with the sienna, and then over in here is a little bit more white with maybe with a touch of orange in it. So we're going to have some variations of color. And um, I'm going to use just a little bit of medium. Now I'm going to start out with just some burnt sienna. And that's going to be up here to the very top. And then as you work your uh, strokes in, you're going to pull down with them. I'm going to add some raw umber to my burnt sienna. A bit of raw umber so I want it darker. your stroke direction going with the slope of the of the roof and you'll have to look at the ends to see the slope that gives you the idea of the slant so again this is burnt sienna with a little bit of raw umber and as I come down I'm going to pick up an over here I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white with it as I come down here, it began to get just a little bit lighter. Just a little bit of um, a little bit of orange and white there. Orange and white, burnt sienna and white. looking roof. Probably a tent roof that's gone completely rusty. And over here on this far uh, left area, that's where there's a little bit of orange and white. Bring it in to whatever's above it and around it. You don't want to over blend your roof. You want to see all these different colors and just kind of loosely pulled together. So it still has a streaky look. board right there at the very bottom of the roof that's white. I'm going to put a little dark line above it with raw umber. And there's that little edge there that I'm just going to clean the brush and pick up some white and put that little white line right there at the bottom. And that's your roof. over to the front barn now and let's start with this left side. I'm going to lay some dark right underneath the roof edge with the raw umber paint gray. 
Now we've got to watch our contrast on this wall because we want to be different on this wall from the wall behind us. The wall behind us is going to stay a little darker. And if it's not dark enough, we may have to go back and adjust our darkness of that color. But this wall right here is going to have end up kind of a blue-gray. But I'm going to start out like we did on the other one with some of the raw umber and Payne's gray. And if you lean just a little bit more to the Payne's gray, that would be fine because that would give it a little bit more of a blue-gray look. So it's darker up here, and then I'm picking up some white, some more white and a little medium to paint the wall in. And again, we're looking for kind of that stripy barn board kind of texture. So you can either work on the, I, I like to work more on the side of the brush, it makes it a little streakier. This will go on rather tan, but then I'll come back with a little bit more blue gray. As I come toward the back of the building, I'm going to pick up a little more white. I'm going to add just a little touch of the endothrone blue. We don't want a bright blue, but we want that little bit bluer look on this wall. So if you have a lot of white with your blue, it'll be fine. And some of that blue will kind of streak in through the whole wall. I like the windows out. It's easier to put them back in and go around them. Is my theory. And a little bit more blue, blue white, ultramarine blue, or not ultramarine blue. It's infrared blue and white. That wall's about the color I really want it right now. You can see it's a definite contrast with the one that's behind it, so there's no running together on that wall. And if you might have lost a little too much of the dark under the roof and in your blending, go back and put some more back in. I can stand a little more here. Right, and under that roof is going to be more of a cast shadow. down kind of loosely. And then I'm going to pick up my burnt umber Payne's Gray mixture and put my little windows back in. There were five of them actually. I'm going to sketch them in with the corner of the brush or the side of the brush. They don't have to be perfectly perfect. This wall is a little bit of a slant here, so your windows should also be a little bit of a slant. So look at the bottom of the wall and then look at the bottom of the windows and see if they're kind of at the same slant. Hopefully they will be, and if not, we can adjust them. And the top would kind of go the same. These need to be just a little taller right here. So they would be kind of even, and these are kind of even, and they even up with the bottom uh, line there. And while I'm here, and can lay my hand down over here on this dry area, I'm going to suggest just a few little board lines like we were doing in the other barn. Could have done this for did the windows actually would have been there. And that gives you some little more direction over there too. up that wall, let's just go ahead and move over to the other 
other wall to gain the land here. And, and like we did on the one before, we're going to run a little dark line at the top of the wall. There's a little fascia board line that's actually above this one that I'm, I'm not on yet. This is the bottom line. Bottom line. A little uh, bird upper, maybe a speck of paint's gray in it. Just something dark. Come down that bottom line. Now this, this wall, this whole wall, is going to be somewhat lighter. It's going to have some of that orangey white highlight on it too for the sun's hitting it. But we're going to start it out like we did the others with that gray look. So it's white with your raw umber. Maybe it's a little touch Payne's gray. Probably more raw umber in this one than, than anything else. And um, you're going to go around these doors. There's a big high door up here where I assume they would put hay in at that door with a hay elevator or something. We'll go around it and we'll go around the bottom doors and we'll also go around these windows down. Well, you can go around all the windows. They're pretty good sized windows. We won't lose them. You want to use a little medium in your paint and a little bit of your mostly raw umber. You'll get a base coat on it and then we'll add other detail on top of that. Sometimes I may want to pick up just a little bit more of the blue look. So you could go into a little bit of the of the uh, end of thrown blue, or you could add just a speck of paint's gray, a little additional paint's gray in with the white. That gives you a, either way you get a blue. A little bit of that in there. Just to vary the colors somewhat. I'm going to paint right across that horizontal line that's there above the windows. We'll just paint it out. We know where it'll be, so we'll find it again. To the foundation line. come in and stroke just a little bit of real soft orangey white on this wall. As you can see it's got a little sunshine on it. It doesn't take much orange. Orange is such a strong color. Very pretty color though. Soften that line at the top and, and lose it. The 
while you're cutting your orangey white in over here, don't forget to add some on the other side too. We can do just a little here and there that puts the sunshine on the building. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and make these doors just a little bit lighter. They're still kind of a grayish color, but they, we want a little more white in your mix. We can get it. It actually looks like three sections to this door. So you've got, we'll have it divided up into three pieces when we get it finished. Maybe put a little bit of brown tone in it as well. But I might add just a little bit more dark around it there, just a little bit. Well, it really separates the doors anyway, even though I <clears throat> I do have my little my wall a little lighter than the doors. The doors are lighter than the wall, and I'll set it right in a minute. But you you can come along with your edging. Put a little bit of dark, a little, a little bit of raw umber along those edges. Sometimes I think it might be easier to do it with a liner. Whatever works for you. But I'm gonna come in with a liner a little dark line down the side of the doors. This one comes all the way down through the foundation. It's very, very thin. This is very thin raw umber. I'm going to add just a few little board lines. don't have to be real detailed at all. And I'm going to divide the doors up into the three sections. So this one has a line about here, runs about across the top of the windows. And then this one has a line that's just up from the foundation. And then I've got little hinges. hinged on the left. This bottom one doesn't seem to have a hinge. dark on this wall here. Before I finish out the board lines or anything, let's go ahead and paint our windows in. Uh, we're working with smaller areas. 
the windows are just your dark mix of raw umber and things gray. Here, just about the width of the brush. boards down here in this section here. Taking the liner and kind of tidy enough around my windows. I have a little space there that didn't quite get any paint in it, so you can tidy that up with a small brush. Well, I'm using my liner. I'm just going to set a little frame in and just work a little bit away from the window and put a dark line in and that creates the frame. The wall color is your frame and this is creates a shadow around the frame which makes it look, you know, show up as a frame. And those windows also have a little cross piece in the center for your four window panes and that would be done with white or kind of a dirty white. These are kind of a double window here. I always be sure to thin the paint down when you're doing little line work and I usually thin it with turf instead of medium find it really works better. Little windows, tiny little frames, just again, just sketch in a little dark line just to the outside edge of your front of your window and that creates a frame. board in that opening there that's kind of a little angled board. Okay, when you've got most of this little bits of color in the walls that you want, you can go ahead and put some of your little board lines in which on this side you can either use your liner, which I'm doing here, or if you'd rather put it in with the side of your flat, you can do that. I think the liner is a little easier on this wall. It's got so many uh, windows and little different places that you need to skip over. And some people would prefer to wait till the wall is completely dry and come back and do their line work. And that's perfectly fine if you want to, you know, skip that detail and come back to it after it's tacked up. Sometimes, though, I, I think it makes the lines just a little bit too prominent to do them over a dry background. It looks a little better on the wet background because they come out a little softer, which I like better.
but just put enough lines on there again that it looks like an old building. You do it an hour later. And all of all of the lines don't have to be perfectly in anyway. I think it looks better if you just kind of suggest some of them. Instead of making them all real strong and real definite. And you can break out a few more holes in the barn. It depends on how old and ragged you want your barn to look, but sometimes along the foundation area, which you're going to have that foundation right about here, and up from the foundation the boards will start to kind of rot out and create some holes. It looks kind of nice because it looks old. Not that holes look nice, but they look like they belong there. always do some now and some later, you know, again, if you want to come back to them later and detail them out a little more, that's perfectly fine and up for you to do that. And sometimes I'll do things like this. Um, I'll get my lines in and then I'll come back with a little uh, light color, maybe like on this one, a little orangey white and put it on the boards themselves, kind of skipping the lines, and put a little more highlight on them. Sometimes I do that. So there's a lot of different things you can do to old barns and make them look good. But a little bit of that orange white's nice in there because it just puts some sunshine on it. It's a little warmer light, as long as you don't get it too orangey. And hit it here and there looks good too. Old buildings like this you can sit and play with your detail for a long time. In a class situation though, you kind of have to get it on fairly quickly and move on, but I'll always know you can come back to it at a later time and make corrections, add detail, whatever you feel like is needed. When you get your detail pretty much on your building, uh, let's go ahead and paint the roof. Go back to your detail flat brush. Now this roof is quite dark. Uh, it's going to be paints gray and raw umber, and then we'll put a little bit of blue white highlight on it. But I'm going to start out really dark, and I, I like to draw a line down the top ridge of the roof so we've got that established. There is a little light fascia board around the edge. I'll, I'll sketch that line in, leaving the white for the fascia board, which we'll put in in a minute. Leave a little edge over there, too. And then on the roof itself, again, I'm going to follow the angle of the roof as I put in the dark. And this is Mains gray with a little raw umber. bottom of this um, dark side too, so I'll leave a little crack there that's unpainted. When you've got your dark in, clean your brush and pick up white and zendithrone blue. Put 
mix it up just a lighter, a little bit of light blue that will show up and then just kind of flick it in from the top coming down. If you work it too much, you're going to blend it in and lose the color entirely. So it's got to be kind of a quick blend or just a quick pull. And don't go back and forth and back and forth because you'll lose it. It'll blend in entirely. But just put a little blue white on that side looks nice. Okay, on the edge of this roof, I'm, I'm going to use that little orangey white color that you've used down the lower in the siding. And just run that little edge around on the roof for a little fascia board and a little bit maybe over here that might show up. If there's any white left showing, just put it in, put it, color it with your uh, orangey white. And then all, as you turn and go down this little shadow side, pick up your blue white instead. I'm just using the side of my detail flat. You got a little blue white on the shadows and a little orangey white in the sunlight, and that takes care of your little facial boards. And then we'll move on down to our foundation with your. Uh, little flat detail flat brush. Now there is a dark line between the wall and the foundation. A little dark crack line. Had it there once, but it kind of got lost there. I'll put it back again. All the way across. And then remember we were using a mixture of white and raw umber and a little touch of burnt sienna back here for this foundation. And we're going to do the same thing on this side here. But we, we've got a problem right here because this foundation and this one is going to look like they're running together and we don't want it to do that. So what we do is grow a bush up between them. <laughs> and that will work every time. So I'm just going to take a little bit of paint gray and raw umber and right here I'm going to lose one of my windows but I don't care about that. And on the back side the back barn, I should say, is where the bush is, and then it comes up to the foundation of the front barn, but it doesn't encroach across it, so that keeps it behind. And make it kind of kind of rounded out like a little bush, and don't worry about your window. If it gets lost, it gets lost. And then just while I'm there, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the green and white, or green and yellow ochre, White, a light green, whatever you got there for a light green. Permanent green, light, and yellow, white would probably work good. Really. And, and add just a little bit of highlight on that so it looks like it's a bush or some kind of green. We leave, leave it darker down here toward the foundation or toward the, toward the uh, front wall. And there's your little bit of bush, and that's going to separate those two buildings like a charm. Then we'll go back to our foundation color. And remember, again, that was raw sienna and white with a touch of uh, raw umber. Just a little bit of raw umber. This side will be somewhat darker. And just pat it in. What color is that? Uh, this is white with a little raw sienna and a touch of raw umber. This side, again, could be just slightly darker if you want it to be darker. That would be good, so we'll separate it from the front foundation, which will be a little lighter. White, raw sienna, or not raw sienna, burnt sienna, and raw umber. With some variation to them so it's not all one flat color. And the front wall is the same color, it's only more white. So it's, it's a lighter value on this front side. Right to the corner. White, white, raw umber, burnt sienna, 
kind of a mixture, loose mixture, so you get some lights and darks. I just kind of pat that color in. When I know it's it's a concrete area, I, I want to get some a little suggestion of texture. So if you just kind of vary your colors and pat them lightly on top of each other, you'll get enough variation. It looks like what it's supposed to be, hopefully. Got a little can over here toward the end of that barn. Looks like it's just a big old oil drum or something. It's probably out there to catch some rainwater or something. So you'll paint up to it. shadow out from that oil can there. Oil drum. A shadow, a little cast shadow on the wall. A little bit more raw umber would be great for that. Small 
very lightly, very quickly. I'm pulling just a little bit of that dark around. And a little touch of rust would look good in that too. A little bit of orangey, burnt sienna kind of color, kind of a little dab of rust in the barrel. And it's really going to need that dark, dark division right there on the, on this side, on the where it's against the wall. You've got that dark, and then it's coming out a little bit of horror shadow. We've already really got a shadow in there, but a bit more. Now I'm going to put just a tiny little line, a little curved line across somewhere in the general center of it. And that's about all it needs. The bottom of it, if you're going to see the bottom at all, it probably will be lost in the grass, but it would be a little dark line at the bottom. Probably would lose it in the grass. But yeah, that, that dark has to be really dark right there against that egg, that wall. And you can pull it out just a little bit. I'm kind of tweaking it out with my liner. So we got that strong shadow. That, that makes it pull away from the wall is the shadow. Without the shadow, it's going to get lost on the wall. Crack lines in the wall while I'm here. Just a little touch more orange on it. Some of these colors of the grass, where we left off with the grass, we had some uh, permanent green light. A little bit of yellow or perhaps some uh, maple jello in there. And just pat a little bit of green in under the barrel once you've got it painted. Maybe a little darker green would be better too. Especially on this shadowed side, it needs a little darker green against the wall. And then we'll come in with a bigger brush to finish off our grass and so forth. Trying to get it just around the barrel so that would be taken care of. What color was that again? The barrel? No, the grass. The grass. Try uh, paints gray uh, with a touch of the uh, permanent green light and white. Uh, maybe I add a little touch of yellow to it. Uh, you'll, you'll have to match whatever grass you've got there that's close by. Everybody's was a little bit different. but. A darker green, you could use your uh, blue, dark blue, and chrome blue, but from the green, light, and white would work. Okay, let's leave the barn alone, and we're going to kind of establish where our pathway is coming down through here so we know where that is, and then we can put our grass in. Your path is going to be done with your flat bristle brush. This is small background brush again. And we're going to pick up white with a little bit of burnt sienna. Not too much burnt sienna, just a little to the distance. It's going to be a little darker down toward the front. But this, this path kind of sort of runs in toward the door. And you're going to put it in with little back and forth strokes. That's going to make it look like it lays down. We want it laying on the ground, not standing up like a wall. So we have to make our movements back and forth like ground, like a flat ground. There's a little bit of path even going back this way. It looks like kind of fades out. If you catch some of the green, that's that's good. You want to soften the edges of the green into the path anyway. White with a little burnt sienna. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down into the foreground, 
I have to use them a little medium, by the way. Pick up just a little touch of your raw umber down in here. Not that a little too much. Not quite that much. This is dirt, you know, it's just a little dirt, kind of gravelly dirt road. Half, whatever. So if you can keep from over blending, that would be nice. So it's not just quite blended to death. <laughs> not that you would blend it to death. Swirl in some little extra lights or darks so it's a little variation of color. Right as it runs out of the picture, it gets a little darker. You get some blue gray in there, a little dark blue or paint gray, something dark, just before it gets out of the picture. Loose, loose strokes. Don't try to scrub it too much. Probably enough. When you place your greenery, it hits the path. Just let it soften out. There's no, no hard edges there at all. As you're getting your road in there, be sure that your road and your foundation under the barn are separate. Pat a little grass that, or something under the foundation so it's going to separate it from the color of the road because they're about the same color. And over here, see, you're going to have a little grass over there. Um, the basic grass colors that we were using earlier, I think, were more like Payne's Gray and the... Uh, permanent green light with maybe an addition of a little touches of yellow or white or something in there to give you variations to your green. So while I'm up here with this flat brush, I'm going to work enough green under that two sides of your foundation that it separates it nicely from your road. And when, you're, when you've got your road in there, and it's kind of based in, if you want it to look more rocky, you can double load a brush. Now when I double load a brush, I'm loading one. Let's see if I can get the palette up here where you can see it. Okay, I'll pick up like a little burnt sienna, maybe a little burnt umber on one flat side of the brush. Turn the brush over and put like a little orangey white or a light color on the other flat side. So I have one side of the brush with dark on it and the other side with light on it. So you've got a dark side and a light side. And then come into the road with the light side up, come in on the kind of the corner of the brush and just do little choppy strokes that kind of scoop to the side and you get all this little gravelly, rocky texture in the road. I'll put it some in and then I'll kind of go back over and re do some strokes over what I already did so it's not too rocky or too definite. So I put some in and kind of chop it out a little bit, but anytime you want to get a rocky look, just that's the way to do it. Double load your brush, have your light side up, the dark side down, and, and just pull it, come in on the corner of the brush now, not the whole flat end, just on the corner. Give it a little scoot to the side and you've thrown off a little rocky gravel shape, which is kind of neat. Works well for a lot of things. Works well for little snow chunks when you want to do snowy chunks. and Works well for gravels and lots of different things work well with a double over brush. Okay, so, and then again, soften your grass up here that's around the can, kind of down into the edge of the road. You know, these old roads always have grass in them. Or they have little bits of grass that have grown out there in the road. 
And then I think we'll probably be ready to go ahead and finish out this grass area back here by the barns. Up against these buildings, it's really dark, and we're going to go ahead now and work this grass. But right up here against the buildings on each side is some very, very dark grass because it's in the shadows. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray, touch medium, and maybe just a little bit of the Viridian or one of the greens, just a little bit. And then this can actually kind of look like little bushes in here. This is quite dark. It's almost too dark. Paint's gray with just a little bit of the green. There we go, that's better. Kind of using about a corner of the brush here. I'm not using the whole brush because it's such a small area. And this can actually look kind of bushy up over the edge of the barn. A little bit. Little padding down strokes, kind of soften the edges of the grass. And as we come down the hill, I'm going to get somewhat lighter. So I'll pick up a little bit of yellow and white with my dirty brush and come on down the hill. Now I'm working with about half of the brush at this point and some medium. And kind of a mid-tone grass, it gets lighter as it comes on down here a little way, but none of this is just real light, it's just lighter. Some of the viridian is good in there, viridian green. I like to kind of mix my grains and get different colors of them. The green starts looking too bright, put a little bit of ultramarine blue in it. Whatever else is in your brush, not just straight blue. But. See, I'm kind of going down with the slope of the ground, angling it down. And you want your green lighter, pick up a little white and yellow medium. Or, or maybe, well, yellow medium is better. I think this yellow would work. I want this a little darker as I'm coming off down into the valley here. to come around over this way, I may get just a little bit lighter. Off green, blue, cad yellow, medium, and white make a nice light green. That's my standard green I've used for so many years. It's pretty good out here in the sunshine. Off green, blue, cad yellow, medium, and white. gray or more blue when you want it darker. When you hit the edge of the, of the dirt road, just kind of soften and blur the green out into the road just a little bit. Keep plenty of paint in your brush, that helps too. Painting grass is a time when you need quite a bit of medium in your paint and quite a bit of paint in your brush. So we're 
continuing on down the hill. Now down in this lower area, I'm pretty dark down here. I've got a lot of very dark value, like paints gray or a lot of uh, dark blue and chrome blue with just a little bit of yellow. Anything like that gives you some good darks. You want it pretty dark down here. little fence it's going to be coming down the hill and we'll have a few little flower bushes and things like that of interest in the fence row and below it. You want to retain this bright spot back here at the back of the uh, of the barns right in here. Don't lose your bright spot. That's the light coming out from behind the building so we want to be sure we save that. And then coming back down to the road area Right in here, if, you, if you're fairly light in this area, you can tap in some darker little bushes. Uh, pull those out into the edges of the grass. Because we've got some little flowers and so forth that might want to sit on those little bushes. And always at the edge of the road, if you're looking into the road, like where the, the road and hits the grass back here, Soften it, pull it out. We don't want any straight, hard edges back there. And then come on down into the foreground. That'll be next. And this is more bushes than grass. There's well, there's some grass down here, but it bushes up into uh, loose leaves. I'm going to use a lot of the paint's gray, just a touch of yellow in it. It's very dark. Oh, I'm going to work on the corner of the fan brush and just tap in what would be a, a taller bush right here on the edge of the road, edge of the canvas. And then when you get down here a little way, you can pick up some of your lighter greens again more yellow and white in your dark. Put some more grassy areas in. Anything that you're looking over the top of the grass, it needs to look kind of tall and loose, standing up. And anything that's flatter like this would be your regular grass. It's not standing up so much. But all of this foreground area I've based in pretty dark, so I will start out with more paints gray, a little bit of blue, just a touch of yellow, and keep this area real dark for now, and then we'll put some highlights and stuff on it. But as you're putting in these foreground banks, just think, now I'm looking over this grass, so I could have some taller grass that comes out over the road a bit because I'm looking over it. This straight Payne's Gray is your darkest dark in this grass. So a lot of Payne's Gray with just a little bit of yellows or some of your uh, permanent green light. best for grass because it's it's you can use it very loosely and your grass can go in very very loose which it should and then I can get some highlights on this foreground shortly with some little flowers and maybe a little bit of lighter grass and uh, make it pretty. Okay, we're going to come up here now and put our fence in and use your detail flat brush. We'll work it on the side. Look at the picture you've got there so you get an idea about where these posts go. We don't want them running straight into a corner of the barn or, you know, where they would run into something that would look make them look odd. Uh, I'm going to 
put one here. It does come up into the foundation a little bit and just down. Now this is just raw umber and Payne's Grace. It's just a dark mixture. We got one there. The second one, here's the foundation of that building back there and so we're kind of under it somewhere. And these posts can lean a little bit. They look better if they do. Old posts and old barn. And then you've got, well, here's another one that's you know, it's past the building. It's somewhere along in here. And we'll just put another one down. And I've got a couple more. Here's one that's somewhere about probably in here. And one that's just kind of almost out of the picture, but not quite. And after you get the dark in, wipe the brush, pick up a little bit of dirty white. It doesn't have to be clean on one side of the brush and let it let the paint be facing right and run a little light line just just to the edge of the dark. So they put just a little bit of highlight on the post. And again the paint's on one side of the brush only. And you put the side with the paint on it looking right. You don't want a lot of heavy white, but just enough highlight it makes them show up a little bit. Doesn't have to be dark or bright. Put on some that looks a little too much, just drag over it with something dark in your brush and you knock it down a bit. Now this is optional, but I and I just now kind of noticed it, but somewhere along in the middle of this little field, I picked up just a little bit of the road color and slapped in a little bit of uh, burnt sand and white right there. Like you've got a little grass, where I mean where the grass used to be, and it's kind of bare right there, like a little dirt area. That's optional. You don't want to put it in, you don't have to. It's just a little, just kind of opened up the greenery a little bit. Nothing more than the road color, or the raw sand and white, or something similar. Anyway, back to the fence. After you've got your fence posts in, took the liner, thin the paint down with your turf instead of medium this time, and then you can just kind of run a little line. And I'm not sure my dark line's even going to show up. I think we'll have to put it in with a little orangey white. Depends on the color on your grass, but if you're kind of on the dark side, the dark line's not going to show up. If your grass is dark and your line's dark, it's not going to show. So I'm going to put these in with a little off white. A little bit of orangey white. And very thin paint. Get your paint as thin as ink. My little finger goes down to hold myself up off the canvas when I do these little lines. I just touch with my finger on the paint below, the painted area below, and it, it doesn't really disturb it. And there's my little fence. And if you want to put in a few more little taps of grass or whatever you can, but I'm going to add some little flowers to my bushes, the dark bushes, little shrubbery and all this stuff. Your flowers are going to be put on with your fan brush and we'll load it like you're loading, pushing away from you and then turn it over and the paint should be on the top corner of the brush, top right corner if you're right-handed left hand you can know what to do if you do it backwards. I have a little bit of blue. I'm going, to, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the cobalt turquoise and white with that way of loading the brush so the paint's on this top corner. Now I'm just going to tap in some little blue flowers. I love that blue. It's such a pretty color. Turquoise blue. And you just tap, you just tap, and, and very, very loosely kind of tap in your little blue flowers. Some of them could be a little whiter. The original painting shows a little bit more white in some of the flowers. 
Anything that stands up like a little bush needs a few little flowers. Reload as needed. You don't want to pound. Don't hit too hard and pound the colors in. This is a light, light touch with just enough paint that it throws the paint off onto the surface. Make sure, make sure flowers. Turquoise and white, or you can use some ultramarine, or uh, it's not ultramarine, it's the endochrome blue and white. You can use that too, that makes it pretty blue. And I just kind of stuck with more blue this time, just a little bit of white. Folks, we're going to paint the tree. This is the last big hoorah up here on this painting. So we're going to get this tree in, and there's not really a pattern line for it. So what I find works well for me is to start in the middle of the tree and tap out and to try to create the shape of it. And you can look at the picture to kind of give you a guideline. So we'll, we'll go from there and see what happens. Um, I'm starting with a dark value first. I'm picking up a little Payne's Gray, and maybe just a little touch of your Viridian would be okay, just a little, a very dark value. I can see where my trunk is, so I know the tree's kind of in this general area, and I'm just going to start tapping with the bottom corner of the brush. I'm just tapping. Don't scoot and slide, just tap. And you're going to bring this color right on over to the barn. If you need to, later we'll come back with a smaller brush and get it right up there against the building. Now as you tap, all of these little strokes basically run together. Or at least they're tied together. You may want to leave some little holes in there for, uh, you know, background showing through or whatever but all of your strokes should be tied together. In other words, you're not going to do this. You're not going to make polka dots. Use a little bit of medium in your paint as you go. Don't let your paint get too dry. A little medium helps tremendously. The tree comes a little bit over the corner of the building, about that much far. And it's going to come down a little bit here. But then, uh, again, I concentrate on trying to work in the middle of the tree first. I'm going to let it grow from the inside out. That seems to work the best. Sometimes my little strokes kind of pat back and forth and then out. Stay right on the bottom corner of the brush. I'm going to start using just a little bit more green in this. So what did you start out with? I started out with Payne's Gray, and it didn't have much of anything else in it, just some Payne's Gray, but now I'm picking up, I think, a little bit of more Viridian, or just a touch of the permanent green light would be okay, too. It's still a dark value, but it's looking maybe not quite as dark. If you look carefully in your sky, you might see some of your tracing line patterns. I can kind of see a few of them. If you see some, be sure and cover them up. You want your tree to have nice little ins and outs on the outside edges, and that's going to be hard because what people want to do, they pull a branch out, you know, one way, one length, one area. And then pretty soon they've pulled everything else out to the same length and they've got a big circle. Avoid circles. We don't want a big round ball for the tree. We want it to have branches that some lean out further than others and we've got holes in between, space in between. That's more natural. So, you know, kind of slow down sometimes. There's no race on this, so, you know, we don't want to get a tree that's a big round 
ball sitting up here on the top of the barn. Paint spray with a little bit of your permanent green light and or meridian. That's what I'm working with here. And you could leave some sky holes, remember? That's kind of why we left a little bit, some of us at least, left some of our sky unpainted or painted very lightly in the middle so that we'd have some sky holes for the birds to come fly through your trees. Hit the tree and fall to the ground dead because it was so solid. <laughs> Poor little birds. <laughs> a leafy look. When we put our light leaves on, the tree's going to grow a little bit more too. This, these are still just your darker leaves. Putting the the tree on at the end of the day though works better because we've got that sky has had time to tack up quite a lot bit, quite a bit. Stop every once in a while and look at your tree and see what kind of a shape you're building. Are you building something that's got some nice variation in length of branches and got some holes in between some areas? So you're not gonna too solid here. Okay, I'm going to start working in some of the lighter greens now. I think I've got enough dark in there. Use your, uh, your permanent green light with some yellow and a little white. That makes a nice light green. Your paint needs to be thick in the brush, real heavy, because if it's not, you'll not get anything off the brush because you're working over a wet base coat here, so you've got to have heavy paint and a light touch to make it stick. And all around these outside edges, your leaves are more light, yellow, greens. The light is hitting them out there. Takes a lot of little tapping to make a big tree, but it'll look good when you're done. Take your time with it. When we get quite a few leaves in it, we'll stop and put our trunk and our branches in. And that makes it look like a tree. And then we can still yet add more leaves as needed. I'm working a lot of just yellow and white right here because I'm picking up a lot of the dark already from the tree. It's the dark is already down. Concentrated on this right side because your light is coming from the right. The dark side of the tree would be your left side and it will have probably actually very little to no yellow white. It will have a little bit of green, like the permanent green light could go on there, or little bits of the cobalt blue would be pretty on the cool side of the tree. You'll save your yellow greens for more over on the other side, the right side. Okay, let's add our trunk. We've got a, quite a bit of foliage in here, so we need to put our trunk in and a few limbs. I'm going to use the liner, and I'm going to use the thin raw umber, maybe a little paint spray with it, just a mm -hmm. value. Thin uh -huh. it down with your thin, no, um, uh, thin it down with your uh, turf. Mm -hmm. And let's not start right on the peak of the barn. Slide down the no, barn a little way. No, 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 okay. And this will be your dark trunk. I'll start it with one branch, but I'm, I mean oh, one line, but I'm going to, you know, probably do two or three lines to get it a little wider at the bottom. And then as you bring your limbs up, give them a few little quick flicks that, you know, okay. makes them look thinner as you come up. 
can't come in. You're going to have some little limbs coming out from the sides of the roof in different places, so it looks like the tree isn't growing from the roof, but you know, it looks going down in behind somewhere. You're not going to need a lot of limbs, but we need enough to make it look like a tree. Paint is very, very wet. Again, use turp to thin it, not, not medium. The medium is too thick. And after you get your dark limbs in, get those placed, I'm going to pick up a little orangey white and come in and just a little highlight on the right side of your trunk, like the light was catching it, a little orangey white. And it doesn't have to be everywhere, but you can put a little bit here and there in your tree if you can get it to stick. It may, may not want to stick too good with all this wet paint. And I, I usually kind of skip my limbs in and out of the foliage, but you can always come back and tap a little more foliage in front of any of the limbs of the trunk. If you get everything, you don't want all your limbs and your trunk in front of the foliage. You want some of it in front and some of it look like it's in the middle or behind your limbs. So that's when you sometimes have to come and tap in more, more foliage where you feel like you need it to put some of it behind. Some in front and some behind. Yeah, I think, you know, once you've got that trunk in there again, you know, look at it and see if you need to add any more little bits of foliage anywhere, you know, are you satisfied with what you've got? Do you need to soften out any little edges? Uh, do you need to add any more highlights to the light side? And sometimes, folks, I know everybody wants to finish while you're working it on your picture, but sometimes it's advantageous to let your painting dry a day or two and then come back and add a few more leaves of highlight or some more trunk lines or whatever over it when it's drier. It, it just is easier. Okay, before we finish up, let's go ahead and put these little birds in on the roof because that kind of makes the picture. You've got a little wildlife going on up here. so. Here's how you do the little birds. Uh, any dark color will work. Uh, a little raw amber is fine. On my liner, I put my finger down so I can steady my hand. And what you start out with is a little slanted line, just a very small slanted line. Don't make the birds too big. You'll have turkey buzzing. Uh, then you, you want to just kind of round out the chest and there's a little bird right there. Know what kind he is, but he's a little bird. But we'll do another one. See that little sloped line go just below the line and a little a little rounded stroke to make the breast. And you can have some of them looking another way, I suppose. And sometimes I'll just kind of put a little line in there that doesn't really have too much shape to it. As long as you get a few that look more bird-like. And how many you want to put on is up to you. Not too many, I don't know. Oh, birds. And then we'll have a few flying. And most everybody knows how to do those kind of birds because they're just little bees that fly. Two or three flying ones in the sky looks like they're coming in to land. Okay, there's your birds. And so I hope you've enjoyed painting this one, and uh, we'll paint some other good barns and bridges and other things at another time. So thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.